Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jack Mini Trades back here again with another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Polar Pro Basecamp map box, which I'm sure that you've seen in several videos before by other YouTubers who got this way before its release. I know it's been out for a little while and I haven't seen a whole lot of people talking about their longer term experience and how this thing has fared for them uh, in unique professional situations. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the physical features of the product, some of the quirks, parts of the map box that I don't like so much, some of the reasons why you might actually want to pick this up for your professional or personal work, and I'm going to finally wrap this up with my overall recommendations. And if you wanna skip around, Definitely make sure that you take advantage of this timestamps down below. And also be sure to like the video as it does help the algorithm and help more people find my channel, learn a little bit more about cameras and technology and all of that fun stuff. And also if you want to directly support the channel, you can also head over to my website and pick up my FX3 settings profile. You can also pick up a print through my partner Spoke Sound, uh, or you can also give a super thanks down below. All of that would be definitely greatly appreciated, but it's not, of course, anything that you need to do. So with that being said, let's get straight into the video. All right, so first off, I wanna talk about the most important thing, which is pricing. So the Polar Pro sells kits, which are basically the most cost-effective way of getting into the system. But if you uh, just want to go ahead and buy individual components, you can also do that as well. So in those cases, if you wanna buy just the core, which is pretty much this part that you're seeing right here. Um, that is going to be the stage one and stage two filter uh, mounts, the French flag, and this sort of shroud that goes around the metal bit. You're also going to get an 80, 87, 95, 100, 104, and 110 millimeter clamp ring, as well as you're going to get the 77 and 82 millimeter threaded plates. So that will allow you to basically screw on to front filter threads. If you want more sizes, you'll have to pick those up separately. And that is going to run you $400. If you want to pick up the stage three adapter, which I'll also be showing in this video, that's going to run you $300 and that comes with the French flag for that and the shroud. And then if you want to get any of the standard rectangular filters, those are gonna run you $200 a piece. And then if you want to pick up any of the stage one circular filters, those are gonna be $150. It should also be noted that if you wanna buy a variable ND filter for this system, you're also going to need to buy a CPL filter as well. That is just something to keep in mind if you're going to be buying this uh, in sort of a parts manner instead of buying one of the bundles. Additionally, if you need more accessories like rail mounts, they sell those for $120 each. If you want additional threaded plates like a 67 millimeter, 72 millimeter, 86 millimeter, or 95 millimeter, uh, if you already have the 77 and 82 millimeter sizes from the standard kit, those are gonna run you $40 a piece. And then if you wanna also pick up something like this, the Base Camp Defender, which will basically be a protector that goes over top of your threaded filter plates to help protect your lens, that runs $10. All in all, if you choose to buy each of the components separately and you wanna have just one of the ND filters with the CPL and the stage one, two, and three adapters, that's going to run you $1,060. But as I had mentioned before, the most value here really comes if you go ahead and buy one of the bundles. So for an example, if you wanna get the core CPL VND 2 to 5, the 77 and 82 millimeter thread plates, as well as the full clamp ring set, that's gonna run you $650. So that's about $100 or so savings if you go with the bundle versus parting it out. If you really need to have the stage three adapter and you wanna get a little bit of extra filter options, you can spend $1,300 and that'll get you all of the things from the previous set. Plus it's also going to get you the stage three adapter with the VND 6 to 9, and a rectangular blue morphic and rectangular quarter mist filter. So that's definitely going to be a pretty good value option for you if you're getting into filmmaking and you wanna have the most flexibility, I think that's probably going to be your best bet. And then if you are a more advanced user and you wanna get the most out of this system, you can go ahead and for $1,700, you can get everything mentioned in the previous bundles, but you also get the VND 2 to 5 and VND 6 to 9 mist filters, as well as the ND4 gradient filter. 
So keep in mind that these prices are if you buy direct from Polar Pro, which is what I would personally recommend. But if you do want to pick these up through Amazon, they are available. Generally, though, these prices are going to be a little bit higher. And so they're typically not what I would recommend if you're trying to save money, but you can get them through Amazon. So I will leave links to both the Polar Pro and the Amazon down below so that we can cross reference and see what prices work best for you. Another thing that you can do, of course, is get the second hand like I did. I got this whole set that I'm going to show you on eBay. Um, and so you can definitely get quite a bit of savings if you go that route. Just be careful and only buy it from sellers who have good reputation, good feedback, and make sure that if you have any questions that you ask those ahead of time, because if you don't, you might end up with a product that you don't actually want. And although that was a lot of discussion on the pricing, I think that it's really important to really stop and count the cost of these things. So that way you only get the components that you actually need and you can save in one area or another that's going to be better than you buying things that you don't need and just having them sit around unused. But with that being said, I'm sure that you guys are wondering about the build quality and uh, if you can really justify the price with the components that you actually get. So in general, I would say that the build quality from the base camp system is extremely good. Everything feels very sturdy and well constructed, and it'll definitely stand up to the challenges of run and gun filmmaking or whatever video work that you need to get done. The other thing that's particularly handy about this system is that despite its high build quality, it's also extremely modular and lightweight. So if you need to use this on a gimbal or in another situation where weight reduction is really critical, this is going to be an exceptional thing for you. Even though there are, of course, more expensive map boxes and map boxes that may do certain things better, this is definitely going to be the best system for you if you really care about weight first and foremost. So if you just want to run the core, which is going to be this aluminum bit here, which has the stage one and stage two filter insets, that's going to run just 155 grams. If you also want to add in a square filter, those are going to be 95 grams each. And then if you want to add in a stage one filter, that's going to be 48 grams. So if you wanted to run the core plus a VND and the CPL so that we can actually take advantage of that variable ND, you're looking at just under 300 grams or 0.67 pounds. And even if you do want to have the hood and the flag so that way you can block light and control flaring, you're only going to be adding 165 grams or 0.36 pounds. So all in all, you're just going to be a little bit over one pound. For a matte box, that's really not that bad. And particularly with the DJI RS3 Pro, which I've also featured on this channel pretty extensively, that has a 10 pound payload capacity and you can even push it a little bit past that. And with this system, with a camera and a lens, it's going to be well within the capabilities of that particular gimbal to be able to balance all of this. The body of the core is made out of aluminum, as I had mentioned before, and the hood is made out of a lightweight but durable matte plastic. The flags for both the core and the stage three adapter are going to be made out of carbon fiber. So they're going to be extremely lightweight, but they're also going to be very, very durable. So that is going to be pretty much all that I have to say on the build quality. It's really good. Tolerances are great. Um, and I also really like this sort of burnt bronze and black aesthetic. It definitely looks very nice. I know looks are not everything, but you know, if you pull up to a shoot and you have something that looks like this, you're definitely going to stand out from the rest of your competitors. So that's something to keep in mind. But moving on to dislikes, although I do really like this system, there's definitely some things that I don't like. And starting off that list is, of course, going to be the price. If you want to get both the VND strengths in a bundle, it's going to run you $1,300. And that still doesn't include uh, the largest 95 millimeter threaded plate. So if you do have lenses like the Sony 200 to 600 that need that 95 millimeter thread, uh, you are going to meet paying another $40 on top of that. And then if you want to keep your lens safe while you're transporting it, I would highly recommend picking up the Defender and that's going to run you another $10. Alternatively, if you just use cine glass and a rail system uh, for fast lens swaps, you're not really going to need to pick up any of the threaded plates. You can just use the clamps that come in 
with any of the bundles and those will do just fine. But one thing that you are going to need to pick up is a 15 millimeter rail adapter and those are going to run you $120 a piece. So depending on what you need, you might end up uh, spending quite a bit of money there. So this is absolutely a professional system, but it does come with professional pricing. So that's just something to be aware of. The good thing though, is that the build quality is exceptional. The optical quality of the filters are fantastic. And, and although that is the case, this has been mentioned in other videos that you can find here on YouTube, but unfortunately, since the ND filter works by effectively adding a circular polarizer behind a flat plane filter, there's going to be no hard stops. And so that means that you can go in between the two to five stops. So you could get like two and a half stops, um, which is kind of nice for dialing things in, but you can also go beyond the rated five stops or the rated nine stops in the six to nine. And in many cases, that's not gonna to be too much of an issue, but there are certain situations where if you go too far or if you land in between one of the stops, you might end up with some cross polarization effects, which is not going to be really great for your video and it can severely degrade the image quality. The good thing though is that I really haven't run into any of these issues. As long as you keep it within the rated two to five stops or six to nine stops, I think you'll be pretty much fine, but it is something that's worth mentioning. Another thing that bothers me uh, about the French flag clamp, at least for the stage three adapter, and I should mention that I'm not entirely sure if this is just because I got this product used and maybe uh, the previous owner lost something, so I'm not going to hold it entirely against Polar Pro, but with the wing nut on, especially as I said, the stage three adapter, I really have to crank it down so that I can get the flag to stay up and, you know, stand up to if I tap on it, not falling down and things like that. So like I said, I'm not really going to hold it against Polar Pro, but if you have those issues, definitely leave those comments down below. Let other people know your experience. But in my experience, the stage three adapter wing nut really needs to be tightened down quite a bit more than my uh, standard core stage. Another thing that is uh, important to note is that whether you use just the core or the stage three adapter with this French flag, there's always a slight gap between uh, the flag and the hood when you have it closed up. So that's not really the end of the world, but if you're in a really dusty environment or something like that, it is possible for dust and other things like that to creep through the side here. So I did want to bring that to your attention. But the final thing that's a little bit frustrating about the base camp system is the sheer quantity of items that you need to have to actually carry all of your filters and accessories around with you. If you need to have the stage three adapter, you'll need to have a bag. If you have the core, you're also going to need a bag for that. If you have any of your filters, I would recommend picking up a bag like I have where you can keep all of the filters sorted neatly. And then also if you have all of the clamps and other things like that and you want to take those with you, you'll need another bag for that. So all in all, with this system, you're going to be needing to carry around three to four bags, which is quite a bit considering that you know, sometimes storage can be pretty tight and you may just want to have everything in one bag. Uh, this is going to be taking up a significant portion of your bag if you use all of the components of it together. Finally, the last thing that I don't really like about this system is that if you do buy into this map box, you have to keep in mind that you're buying into the Polar Pro system and thus you're going to be forced to buy only filters that are made by Polar Pro. They don't sell an adapter to take standard 3x5 or other standard size filters. You may be able to manufacture your own holder to adapt those standard sizes, but that's certainly not what this system was designed for. And so if you are going to be somebody who has those standard size filters already, you're going to need to buy all new filters for this system. So that's going to be a little bit of an unfortunate thing, and you're definitely going to have some pretty high upfront cost with that. But if you don't really care about that and you like the convenience and the size and the form factor, the weight, and all of the things that this system brings, I think you'll be very, very happy with it. And despite all of those issues that I had mentioned so far, I think that this is probably the best map box for 
people out there who are just getting into professional filmmaking and they don't have a $3,000 plus budget to spend on a matte box by Airy or Crozier. Especially if weight is important to you and it's kind of the most important factor, you really can't go wrong with this matte box since it's incredibly lightweight. You can easily fly this on a gimbal. And another thing that I really like about this system is that you can get threaded plates up to 95 millimeters, which is a really uncommon size for standard screw-on filters. Typically the highest that you're gonna get out of standard screw-on filters is gonna be 82 millimeters. So with this, what's great is that if you do wanna use it on a lens, like I had mentioned, the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter, you don't need to use the clamp adapters. You can just simply buy the 95 millimeter screw adapter, screw it onto the end by the defender, put that on the end of your lens, and then you can just swap this matte box between your lenses really quickly. Like I said though, if you do have a rail system and you like working with that and you wanna buy the rail adapter for the system, it's going to be pretty easy for you to swap lenses because you can just mount this matte box onto a rail system, slide it away from the lens when you're ready to swap lenses, put the new one on, slide this up to meet the lens and you're good to go. But that is definitely gonna be one of the huge advantages of buying a matte box and one of the main reasons why you're gonna to wanna to have one in the first place, which is to simply save precious time on set. It's gonna help you to keep your attention on things that really matter, like getting the shot. Honestly, the last thing that you wanna do is have a whole bunch of lenses and then have to keep swapping filters out. That takes a lot of time. With a matte box system, you just slide it off, put a new one on, and you're good to go. Another thing that's really great about a matte box is controlling flares. With standard circular filters, you're gonna to have to forego the hood that comes with most of your photography lenses. And that, of course, is gonna let the sun shine directly onto the elements of your lens. And that's gonna basically make it much easier for your lenses, especially those without coatings, to start flaring. With a matte box, the great thing is that you can adjust the flag appropriately to eliminate or at least reduce the amount of light that's hitting your lens and reduce or nearly eliminate flaring in all cases. So overall, I really recommend this product to people who are working on professional shoots where time is critical and unscrewing standard circular filter lenses is costing you money and slowing down your production. Or if you wanna have a singular system that you can swap easily and quickly between lenses without having to mess with filter threads. Or if you wanna gain more control over lens flares when you're shooting outside and shooting backlit. Finally, I would also recommend this to people who are shooting on lenses with large diameter filter threads, like the Sony 200 to 600 with that 95 millimeter filter thread. I used this lens for a wedding not too long ago and I needed to have an ND filter to keep the lens aperture wide open and have the appropriate shutter speed for natural motion blur. Without this system, I wouldn't have been able to accommodate those settings. And so that was definitely something where this came really in handy. Another thing that's really nice about this system, especially for you wedding videographers, is that if you are working with a photographer on the same set or in the same area and they're using a flash, you can actually take this system and you can rotate it 90 degrees or in whatever direction you want so that way the flag points towards the photographer. So that way whenever their flash pops off, you don't get your lens flaring up. So that's definitely another thing that's really nice and a pretty nice pro tip for you guys. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. If you did, definitely drop a comment down below and tell me if you're using a matte box or if you really wanna get into one. I always love talking with you guys. And also make sure that you leave a like and you subscribe to the channel for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you want to support the channel directly, again, you can, of course, buy anything from my store, which I will leave linked in the description. And if you want to give a super thanks or something like that, you can absolutely do that down below. Of course, no obligation to do any of that stuff, but if you do, it is extremely appreciated. And of course, I will see you guys later.